Hey, my construction entrepreneurs. This is Tyrone Jones here with the Construction Entrepreneur School and Services, where we provide construction courses, training, estimating training, blueprint reading training, and we help individuals get their license. On this class here, we're going to talk about how to become a California licensed contractor for 2020. That means from now and all the way into 2020 and into 2020, these are the things that you need to know, that you need to understand to get your license <clears throat> or to be licensed in California. So let's get started with this here. All right, so I laid out a bunch of topics that we're going to need to cover um, so you understand what you need to get your license. Now this class is broken down into five series, so make sure you watch all five classes. I broke it down into five because I have done videos before where it had extended out to a, a, an hour and a half, hour and 20, and just it's, it's just being too long for people to consume nowadays. So we kind of broke this down into, uh, like I said, five parts. This is one of five but we're going to lay out everything that we're going to be going through in this first section. So we're going to go through, do I need to sign up for a school to get my license? Okay. Um, um, a lot of people have questions. Can they just get their materials on their own? Can they do self study which is best and things like that? What experience do I really need? Um, next, what I once I sign up for a school, what do I do next? A lot of people don't know the next step that they need to take once they sign up for a school. A lot of schools are not clear on what steps that you actually need to take once you sign up with them. They're just looking to get you actually in the door, pay to become a paid customer, and then you know send you through their normal process. Uh, should I choose an LLC, S Corp, or C Corp, or partnership? One part I forgot to add there is, or a sole prop, okay? So which one should I choose? I'm going to go through that and let you know which one you should choose and, 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 and what the things you, can, you should consider with your choice. Okay, what classifications should I apply for? Now there's some uh, there, there's some little tweaks here that the CSLB has put out in regarding what classifications you can apply for. Okay, I will discuss that as well. What's holding you back to get your contractor's license? I'm going to talk about that as well. You must be honest on the application. It's very important that you put the right information on there. Okay. A lot of times you may, a lot of times the information that you feel that you are putting on there, you may feel as if it's true, but you may want to make sure and, and have verification that that's true instead of just assuming. So I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of putting information on the application and what happens uh, uh, if you do or if you don't. Okay. Uh, you must uh, uh, accommodation request for examination. Okay, a lot of people don't talk about uh, um, uh, uh, if you speak a different language. You know, do they accommodate you? Handicap, do they accommodate you? So we talk about those different things. The, the accommodation that the board offers that's just not known to everyone. Okay, that way you don't have to rule yourself out. Okay. What if I fail the exam? I talk about if you fail the exam, what to do? What if you pass one portion, not the next portion? What happens? What is your next step? How long do you have? Are you out the ball game? I discuss all those things. How do I get a contractor's license without taking the test? This is the question of the year here. Okay. Talk about RMOs, armies. And, um, and, and how you can get involved in this um, uh, 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 form of getting your license without taking the test, okay? Also talk about um, how much does it cost to get your license? We get down to the nitty gritty of cost, okay? Uh, a, lot of, a lot of students are jumping into this and really not understanding all the costs that's involved. It's not a lot, but at the same time, 
uh, you don't want to be surprised with the cost. Reciprocity. We talk about what states are, 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 um, are uh, accepting California licensees and what states California are accepting their licensees. So basically, you're allowed to go uh, uh, to different states and California is allowed to, to accept certain states because they have reciprocity with these states. We'll talk about that and the requirements that you need to meet uh, um, uh, to meet the requirements for reciprocity so you can actually start contracting in other states. Okay, examination eligibility requirements. Okay, we're going to talk about that. What are the financial requirements to get your license? Okay, what are they requiring? What, what financial status are they requiring you to be in? Uh, also, too, how to prevent delays with contractor application. Okay. Uh, some of the common mistakes that re that causes delays, and sometimes depend on the individual. Those delays uh, 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 can have those individuals fall off to where they're not responding timely or getting back to the board at all. So let's talk about those delays because sometimes the response from the board can draw up red flags with you or with them, and then you're kind of stuck, and then you do nothing with this information and, and, and kind of lose out on, on that opportunity and that money to move forward with getting your license. Okay, what to expect if your application is accepted? That is a good thing. There's some steps that you need to take um, uh, once it's accepted, okay? And then lastly, we're gonna talk about what we offer at the Construction Entrepreneur School and Services for you to get your license. So let's jump right in here. Okay, next, we're going to talk about the classifications. Now, this is very important because a lot of people think that just because you get an A license that they can do everything underneath the sun, okay? What you need to understand is that each license classification deals with a certain framework of work that you can actually do. Just because you have an A license, you cannot go out and build a building. You cannot build a skyscraper. You cannot build a home with an A license. Okay, the A license is a general engineering license. The principal business in this con in connection with fixed works requiring specialized engineering knowledge and skill. You can build water power plants, flood controls, streets, roads, tunnels, bridges, pipelines, underground work. Right, this is what you can do with an A license. Okay, you cannot go out and build a commercial building, but you can build a freeway. Overpass, underpass, you can do that with an A license. Okay, Let's jump to the general B license, okay? The principal business is, is in connection with any structure built, being built, to be built, requiring in its construction the use of at least two or more trades or crafts. Understand that, okay? Type of work you can do is single family dwelling, multi-residential, commercial buildings, remodels, additions, okay? Now listen. As a, this, this is one thing here. Now, if you have a license, most likely out here in the world, if you have a license, owners, unless you're doing work with uh, government agencies, outside of that, they, a lot of companies don't care what license you hold. Some do, it's a lot that don't. As long as you have a license, they feel that that releases liability off of them. Okay, so there's B contractors I've seen um, doing fence work, doing electrical work only, um, doing tree trimming work, okay? Listen, if you are a B contractor by law, we're only talking by law, okay? By law, as a sub, okay, if you was bidding on work to a general contractor, that means you are a subcontractor, okay? You only can go for work dealing with framing. Not drywall, not electrical, not plumbing, not tile work, not landscaping, not concrete, right? You only can you only can bid on work legally framing as a subcontractor. Now, flip side, if you're bidding on work as a prime contractor, that means as a GC, that means you are the next step from the owner, okay? You can you have to bid on work two or more trades with one of those trades being framing. So that means you can go for framing, drywall painting, framing, 
electrical, tree trimming, framing, uh, uh, concrete, asphalt, okay? What those trays, one of those trays have to be framing, okay? Please understand that. Let's move on. Then there's the C classifications, okay? Now this separates this. Remember how I said B, you cannot go out and do single lines work, right? You have to have two or three more trades with one of those trades being framing. That prevents B licensing from taking work away from the C classification license. C classification license, there's 42 separate C license classifications, okay? It deals with specialized building trades and crafts, basically C8 concrete. You can do concrete work. Now, you can't do all concrete work because you can't, you, you're not supposed to be working in the street. That's for engineering, okay? Now, low voltage, you can do all low voltage type stuff. Now, uh, electrical, you can do all the electrical work. Okay, now if you have an electrical license, you're not supposed to be doing concrete work. You have concrete, you're not supposed to be doing electrical work. Okay, you have a B, you're not supposed to be doing only concrete work. Okay, this is how these things separate. So you have to understand that. Now, one thing I want to bring up here is um, there's also an additional uh, uh, classification called uh, uh, the C61. It's the D subcategories. Okay, they deal now in these D subcategories. This is created by the agents of the CSLB when they run into trades that does not fall under C, B, or A classifications. So they actually put them into a C61 classification, which is a D subcategory of C61. So, if, for example, you got D35, pool and spa maintenance. You got D29, paper hanging. You got D52, window coverings. You got D38, sand and water blasting. So these, these uh, class, these, uh, I would say, um, uh, uh, subcategories are not, they don't actually have a, 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 an actual uh, a C classification or a B classification. So eventually they will have a place somewhere within the C license, they would expand the C license or they will fall under a B license. So this is where they go into their, to their class of, to their properly classified. But while they're still there in the D subcategories, you can still go for it, okay? You can still go for that classification. When you go for D classification, because it's not properly categorized, you don't have to take a trade test you only have to take the law and business course. So if you do see a trade that you do there and you wanna get licensed, it's best to get licensed for it while it's in this classification, okay? That way, when it does move, you're covered. But for now, you want to make sure you get it now. All you have to take is the law and business. So make sure you go for it, okay? That's very important, all right? Now, um, one of the things I wanted to bring up with the uh, uh, C classification or with just getting in classification, you always wanna think about where you're going, not what you want now, you gotta think about where you're going with your company on what classification you wanna get. For example, I have an A, a B, and a C8 license. I have an A for general engineering, a B, a B for general building, and a C for C8 concrete. The first license I got was the C8 concrete. I used that, I grew out of the CA concrete very quick and needed the A license because I wanted to do a lot of street work. That was my background. So initially I'm saying that the C8 was great, but I grew out of it very quick. And some of the opportunities I had were dealing with A license and I, could, I had to pass on them because I had to go back to school to get the A license. So you want to think about where you want to go because you can trim off all that time or not lose out on projects that you may feel that you need, that you will be jumping into in the near future. So instead of doing C8, you might want to just go for your A license and then go for your C8 license if you want to do that. So you just got to think about not what you want now, but where you're going in the future, okay? So that's it for part one, okay? Remember, we're trying to keep these, we're trying to keep these little videos down so you guys can consume this, part two, I will be posting tomorrow. Uh, uh, please make sure that 
uh, you watch all these videos in its entirety so you can understand what you need to become a licensed contractor now, which is August 19th, all the way until uh, August, uh, uh, it's August 2020, all the way until uh, the year 2021. Okay, so I'm gonna see you on the next video, my construction entrepreneurs. Hustle hard, then hustle harder. Catch you on the next one.